And before we go straight into the case, glaucoma is actually a complex eye disease relating to the health and resiliency of the optic nerve. And while raised intraocular pressure is important, it's not actually diagnostic criteria for glaucoma, but more of a risk factor. And what I mean by that is you could have one person who has low intraocular pressure have glaucoma, and another person who has high intraocular pressure obviously could have glaucoma. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that up front because I feel it's important so we don't misconstrue eye pressure with glaucoma. So we have a female in her 50s. She was diagnosed with glaucoma in 2011. Her intraocular pressure is high. Also, the optic nerve, when they measured it, has inferior rim thinning in both the left and right eye. Now, in addition to this, her visual acuity, she's nearsighted, corrected with lenses, and she's having allergic skin reactions on her face and neck to the drugs for intraocular pressure. So the treatments done were 48 treatments with coma therapy over a 28-day period in the autumn of 2016. Each treatment was approximately 20 minutes, and the treatment done was Neurology 14 treatment. Now, for anyone who wants to know more about this treatment, please contact us. With respect to results, she went for a checkup in October of 2016, and they noted improvements of pressure. In fact, they'd never been so low, and that measurement was in both the right eye and left eye, 14 millimeters of mercury, the unit of measure they use when they're measuring the pressure in the eye. And in addition to this, the client also reported after the first week of treatment, she noticed that her field of vision had increased. The skin rash was gone, and of course, as a result of all this, she is very happy. So that's the summary. Now we're going to touch on a little bit of detail. Part of why she's so happy is because when you look at this uh, graph for intraocular pressure, you can see that she'd been trying to manage it this whole time until we get to the far right, and this uh, green circle over here indicates that last checkup in which the pressure is now at 14. And when you look at this dotted line here, this is an eye surgery she had in 2014. Now what that eye surgery is, very briefly, what they call a trabeculoplasty. You can see in the diagram, in the inset, how they're kind of like drilling a little hole in the trabecular meshwork in order to reduce the pressure. But it was only a couple of days till the pressure started to go back up, so it didn't hold. She was also using other therapies at the time herbal supplements to detox and we have you know skin detox kidney lymph liver bowel to get rid of all the chemicals from the glaucoma drugs and in addition to this she's taking supplements for her specifically for her eyes as well as vitamin and mineral supplements for her health in general now i want to note here too coma therapy works synergistically with these in terms of helping improve the outcomes with any other kind of therapy that's used be that invasive or non-invasive. Now I'm not going to get into the drugs, I'm just going to list them here. You can look into this if you want. And please note she still takes one of these eye drops under her medical doctor's supervision. Now when it comes to the condition, I didn't go over this optic nerve inferior rim thinning. Now what exactly does that mean? Well if you look at this green circle over here on the right, at the back of the eye, what we're talking about is the optic disc, the optic nerve. And very simply, what it means, inferior means the bottom. And this is what they're referring to in the optic nerve, inferior rim thinning. So I want to say thank you, everybody, for your attention. And I wanted to leave you with a quote. The state of well-being is something that has to be experienced before one even knows that it exists. Once it has been discovered, it needs to be nurtured and tended with care. And that's a quote from Teo Merez, the founder of Radiant Life Technologies. See you next time.